Hi guys, in this video we'll take a look at double angle formulae, deriving double angle formulae, examples, and then we'll finish with a summary. So what exactly are double angle formulae? We have already come across the addition formulae for sine, cosine, and tangent. We know that sine of a plus b is equal to sine a cos b plus cos a sine b. We also know that the cos of a plus b is equal to cos a cos b minus sine a sine b. And then lastly, we've also found that the tan of a plus b is equal to tan a plus tan b over 1 minus tan a tan b. We are sometimes interested in the case when a equals b. For example, we have the sine of a plus a in the case that a equals b. And this will be equal to the sine of two lots of a. Similarly for the cos of a plus a, this will be cos of 2a. And lastly for the tan of a plus a, this is going to be equal to the tan of 2a. We can derive a set of formulae which can express trigonometric functions of an angle 2a in terms of trigonometric functions of the angle a. In particular, we will show that sine of 2a is the same as 2 sine a cos a, as well as showing that the cosine of 2a is equal to cos squared of a minus sine squared of a, and similarly that the tan of 2a is equal to 2 lots of tan a over 1 minus tan squared of a. These are known as the double angle formulae. When we have either sine of 2a, cos of 2a, or tan of 2a, we use the double angle formulae to expand. So how can we derive the double angle formulae? Recall the addition formula for the sine function. The sine of a plus b is equal to sine a cos b plus cos a sine b. Considering the case when a equals b, we can rewrite the equation for sine of 2a. We get that sine of a plus a, because we're going to let b be equal to a, is equal to sine a multiplied by cos of a plus cos of a multiplied by sine of a. And therefore we get that sine of 2a is equal to two lots of sine a cos a. Similarly, Using the addition formula for cos of a plus b, we can form an equation for cos of 2a. We know in general that the cos of a plus b is equal to cos a cos b minus sine a sine b. And if we let b be equal to a, then we have the cos of a plus a on the left hand side, and the right hand side is going to be cos a cos a minus sine a sine a. Therefore, we get that cos of 2a is going to be equal to cos squared of a minus sine squared of a. Using the Pythagorean identity sine squared of x plus cos squared of x equals 1, we can express cos of 2a in terms of only sine of a or cos of a. The above formula is a double angle formula for cos of 2a, but we can use the formula sine squared of a plus cos squared of a equals 1 and therefore since in general cos of 2a equals cos squared of a minus sine squared of a that's what we just derived if we want say cos of 2a to be only in terms of cos of a then we can replace our sine squared of a with 1 minus cos squared of a using the above formula and so we get cos squared of a for the first term and our second term becomes minus 1 minus cos squared of a for sine squared of a. And therefore we get the equation that cos of 2a is equal to 2 lots of cos squared of a minus 1. Similarly, if we want to have cos of 2a only in terms of sine of a, we can replace cos squared of a with 1 minus sine squared of a. And so we have in our general formula 1 minus sine squared of a that's for our cos squared of a, and we minus, as in the formula, a further sine squared of a. And therefore we get that cos of 2a 
is equal to 1 minus 2 lots of sine squared of a. We can also express tan of 2a in terms of tan of a using the addition formula for the tangent. Recall that in general, the tan of a plus b is equal to tan a plus tan b divided by 1 minus tan a tan b. And therefore by letting b be equal to a, we have the tan of a plus a on the left hand side. And therefore the right hand side becomes tan a plus tan a divided by 1 minus tan a tan a. And therefore by simplifying, we get that the tan of 2a is equal to 2 lots of tan a due to the numerator and then we divide by 1 minus tan squared of a. Alternatively, we may use the double angle formula obtained for sine and cosine to derive the double angle formula for tangent. We know that the sine of 2a, as we've just discovered, is equal to 2 lots of sine a cos a. And we've also found that the cosine of 2a is equal to cos squared of a minus sine squared of a. And therefore we have that the tan of 2a, which is equal to the sine of 2a divided by the cosine of 2a, by substituting in these two results, we have that it's equal to 2 lots of sine a cos a divided by cos squared of a minus sine squared of a. We can then divide the equation by cos squared of a to obtain the double angle formula for tan of 2a. If we take our current formula for tan of 2a, which is such that we have two lots of sine a cos a divided by cos squared of a minus sine squared of a, and we divide both the numerator and the denominator by cos squared of a, then we're going to get the following. We're going to have on our numerator two lots of sine a over cos a, because we've divided by cos squared of a. And then our denominator will be just a 1, because we've divided by cos squared of a, minus sine squared of a over cos squared of a. And then finally, we use the fact that tan of a itself is sine of a over cos of a, and therefore we get 2 lots of tan of a on the numerator, and the denominator is 1 minus tan squared of a. This is what we had before, and so it entirely agrees. Let's take a look at some examples. Our first example tells us that given that x equals 2 sine of theta and y equals 3 minus cos of 2 theta, we're asked to express y in terms of x. Our first step is to rearrange the given equations to make the trigonometric functions the subject of the equations. Our first equation is that x is equal to 2 lots of sine theta. By rearranging, we get sine theta on its own is equal to x over 2. Similarly, we have that y is equal to 3 minus 4 lots of cos 2 theta. And by rearranging, we are going to get that cos of 2 theta is equal to 3 minus y over 4. Our second step is to recall the double angle formula for cos 2 theta in terms of sine theta only. We have that cos of 2 theta in terms of sine theta only is 1 minus 2 lots of sine squared of theta. Now the reason why we chose to only have it in terms of sine of theta and not cos of theta is that we have an equation for sine of theta directly. Our third step is to rewrite the formula as an equation involving only x and y. We have our cos 2 theta and this is 3 minus y over 4. And then our right hand side is the 1 minus the 2 lots of sine squared theta. Well sine theta is x over 2 and so we have x over 2 all squared. Our fourth step is to express y in terms of x. Our left hand side can remain the same for now and we have a 3 minus y over 4 and the right hand side can be slightly simplified by expanding out the square and we have that it's equal to 1 minus and we have an x squared over 2 by cancelling out the 2 with the 4. By multiplying both sides by 4 we get 3 minus y on the left hand side and the right hand side is going to become 4 minus 2x squared. 
We can rearrange and put our y on the right hand side and the other stuff on the left hand side and we get y on its own and then we have a 3 minus the 4 and then the plus 2x squared. So therefore we have that y is equal to 2x squared minus 1. This is our equation for y in terms of x. And theta is restricted to the interval 0 is less than or equal to theta, which is less than or equal to pi. Our first step is to recall the double angle formula for tan of 2 theta. We have that in general, the tan of 2 theta is equal to 2 tan of theta divided by 1 minus tan squared of theta. Our second step is to rewrite the formula to have tan of theta on the left hand side. If we have tan of theta on the left hand side, then as a result, we divide all of the arguments by 2 to get from 2 theta to theta. And so we get a 2 lots of tan of theta over 2. And this is divided by 1 minus tan squared of theta over 2. Our third step is to substitute the fact that tan theta equals 3 quarters and to rearrange to find a quadratic equation. We know that tan theta is 3 quarters. And so this is equal to 2 lots of tan theta over 2 divided by 1 minus tan squared of theta over 2. If we multiply up the fractions on both sides, i.e. multiply by a 4 and a 1 minus tan squared of theta over 2, then we get a 3 minus 3 lots of tan squared of theta over 2 on the left hand side. This is because we have a 3 multiplied by the denominator of the right hand side. And this is equal to 4 times 2 lots of tan of theta over 2, which is 8 lots of tan of theta over 2. Then we can rearrange this into the quadratic equation, 3 lots of tan squared of theta over 2 plus 8 tan of theta over 2 minus 3 equals 0. Our fourth step is to solve the quadratic equation by letting x be equal to tan theta over 2. We are going to let x be equal to to tan of theta over 2. And this transforms our equation into 3x squared plus 8x minus 3 equals 0. We can factorise this equation as 3 lots of x minus 1 multiplied by x plus 3. And this is still equal to 0. And then we can set each bracket equal to 0, so we have 3x minus 1 equals 0. Or we have that x plus 3 equals 0. We get that x is equal to 1 third, or we have that x is equal to minus 3. Our fifth step is to find the value of theta that satisfies the given range. Now since it's the case that 0 is less than or equal to theta, which is less than or equal to pi, we have that 0 is less than or equal to theta over 2, which is less than or equal to pi over 2. And therefore, since theta over 2 is in this range, when we take the tan of theta over 2, this is going to be greater than or equal to 0. This is because the branch of this graph corresponds to starting at 0 and going up to a vertical asymptote at pi over 2. And therefore, we can completely eliminate x is equal to minus 3, since that would correspond to tan of theta over 2 being equal to minus 3. And that does not give any solutions because we know that tan of theta over 2 has to be positive or zero in this required range. And therefore, the only possible value of x is x is equal to one third. And therefore, our last step is to write down the value of tan of theta over two. And since we set x equal to tan theta over two, we have that tan of theta over two is equal to one third. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are looking for an amazing A-level math resource, Join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snappify smiley face and together let's make A-level maths a walk in the park.